Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the ERG theory of motivation. Now, the model was developed by an American psychologist called Clayton Paul Alderfer, and you can think of ERG theory as being a simplified version of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And in fact, the best way to visualize ERG theory is by putting it in the context of the hierarchy of needs, as you can see here. Now, ERG stands for existence, relatedness, and growth. And these are the three basic needs that employees will try to satisfy. Now, in the model, as one need is filled, this will provide the motivation for the employee to want to, to fulfill another need. Now, all three needs must be satisfied simultaneously in order for an individual to feel motivated. So let's examine each of these terms, existence, relatedness, and growth in turn. So first we have existence, and existence refers to our basic survival needs as humans. So in this category are food and water, shelter, good health, and feeling safe. And these needs can be broadly described as our basic psychological and safety needs. Now, if you can't satisfy your basic survival needs, then it's impossible to focus on other higher needs. So for example, if you don't have enough water to drink, and if you don't have ready access to clean water, then your life is in immediate peril and finding water will occupy most, if not all of your thoughts at the expense of almost all other needs. Now, next we have relatedness and relatedness refers to our need to relate to other people. So that is, it refers to the relationships we have. Now, having good relationships and interactions with other humans is a need we all share, although obviously this need isn't quite as strong as our basic survival needs. Now, to feel happy and content, most humans need to interact with others and they need those interactions to be positive in nature. Now, finally, we have growth. Growth refers to our need for personal development, to be creative and to perform meaningful work. Now, growth allows us to explore what our potential might be within our current environment. So it's easy to see why you might lack motivation if you're stuck doing the exact same job, job every day without variety. And on the flip side, if your job provides interesting and varied challenges, it's easier to be motivated as you're being presented with growth opportunities daily. Now, an important principle to be aware of in ERG theory is this idea called the frustration regression principle which basically says that if a higher level need fails to be filled, then a person may regress and seek to fulfill further lower level needs instead. Now, for example, if an ambitious employee isn't provided with growth opportunities, then their motivation will be lower and they may become frustrated. And in turn, this may cause them to seek out more relatedness needs. So for example, they may start socializing with other mem members of the team more frequently. And finally, if they're unable to satisfy those related, relatedness needs, they'll regress again and they may further satisfy their existence needs. So there are several differences between ERG theory of motivation and Maslow's hierarchy of needs that you should be aware of. So firstly, unlike in Maslow's theory, needs at multiple levels can be pursued at the same time. And also in ERG theory, if a higher level need isn't satisfied, then the person may regress to seeking to satisfy lower level needs. So that's the frustration regression principle we just covered. And finally, in Maslow's theory, needs must be satisfied in sequence, starting from the bottom of the pyramid and working your way to the top one at a time. And that's not the case with ERG theory, where different levels of needs can be satisfied at any time. So for example, an, indi an individual can feel that they are having their growth needs met while still feeling unsatisfied in their relationships. So how do you use the theory? Well, to boost motivation, managers should look to promote all the elements of ERG theory simultaneously. So. According to the theory, if you limit your focus to just one or two aspects 
of the theory, then you'll fail to motivate your team effectively. So the aim really in using the theory is to take action before frustration regression starts to set in. So first, let's look at existence. Now, employees won't be happy, obviously, if their basic needs are not met. And remember that safety is one of these basic human needs. So if employees don't feel safe in their work environment, then they're very unlikely to be motivated. So one question you can ask yourself is, are you doing everything you can to make your employees feel safe? Next, we have relatedness. And we all want good relationships as humans. If we don't get on with our boss, for example, it's going to be difficult to feel motivated. Likewise, if we have negative relationships with coworkers, then our motivation will probably be low. So we look forward to leaving the office each day so we can get back to our homes and switch to having more positive relationships with our families. So one question as a manager you should be asking around relatedness is, are any of my team working alone all day? Another question you might consider is, are there good interactions between all the team members and what can I do to facilitate better interactions? Finally, we have growth. So in the workplace, we have a need to grow. If we work hard year after year and everything stays exactly the same, we're going to find it really hard to stay motivated for the long term. We need growth. Now, that could mean recognition of our achievements. Achievements. It could mean respect from our peers, pay rises, increases in responsibility, etc., etc. And some questions you can ask yourself as a manager are, do any of your team feel they're stuck in a dead-end job? Is each member of your team aware of the growth opportunities available to them? And finally, do you tend to hire internal or external candidates for new positions? And by preferring internal candidates, that can provide more growth opportunities for your existing team. So in summary, the ERG theory of motivation is a simplified but more flexible version of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it, provo it, it proposes three needs that must all be satisfied in order for an individual to feel motivated, and that's existence, relatedness, and growth. And finally, managers can use the theory to ensure that the conditions within their organization are right to allow each team member to be as motivated as they can. So that's it for today's lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.